Well, howdy neighbor. It's time for another episode. Today, we're building fence picket planters. Three pickets. I kind of feel like Mr. Wilson. I've been watching a bunch of videos on these fence picket planters, and this is my version. So hope you like it, and hope you make lots of money with them. Old Home Depot picked up a couple finch pickets and the first thing that we're going to do is sand them because they're pretty rough and I want it to look like a finished product. Here's a chunk of one that I had already sanded next to the rough one and it just it just feels better. So I'm, I'm using a, a 220 grit on this one uh, but I'd suggest to use a 150. That should be plenty. I mean they're, they're pretty rough so um, if I had 150 here at the house offhand i'd use that now that everything's had a, a decent sanding um i did the sides as well even though the sides don't really matter as much but it's just nice to grab it with your hands um, i've gone ahead and i've set my miter saw here to seven degrees and we're going to cut the end off oh it helps if there's a battery in it okay now that there's a battery in it now we can cut it Okay, so we've got our first cut here. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip it over and we're going to measure from the long tip out here to 14 inches. And we're going to cut it there. Dogs are working. With the first two 14 inch long pieces cut, uh, then you're going to cut two at 12 and 5 eighths on the longest side. And that should about line up perfectly with the bottom edges of the narrow portion of the 14 inch long ones. So if you look down straight ahead, you can see that they both come in. And that should leave you with this piece. And we're gonna set this piece aside for now. Now repeating the process on picket two, um, the bottom one, the longer side is gonna be 12 and three quarter, and the shorter ones are gonna be 11 and three eighths. Um, Always check your stuff as you're making it. Just make sure it lines up properly. Now, some people building these planters are going to tell you to cut all the tops and then all that off of one. I like doing one side, or actually, well, two sides off of one picket because some of these pickets are not the same thickness. Um, so you can see there. So if this was the top of one and this was the bottom of another or vice versa, they wouldn't line up properly. But if this is one side and these are another side, they all line up because it's all the same board for each side. And with the second picket, you should have this much left over. And that brings us to the third picket. The third picket, we're going to take over to the table saw and rip it down into a few different widths. Here we are at the uh, table saw. I've already gone ahead and I've set my blade to a seven degree uh, tilt. And we're going to run the tops and bottoms of the sides through the saw at a five and a quarter inch uh, distance away. So these things should be uh, about five and a half inches, but just like everything else, some of them are wider, some of them are a little bit narrower. So we're going to even them all out. Um, so the, what we're going to run through on the bottom pieces, we're going to run the bottom through. On the top ones, we're going to run the top through. And it'll make sense afterwards. Now that those are all done, we're going to rip this down too. This is the third picket. So make sure the blade is going back to vertical. And the first cut we're going to do is a uh, inch and a half. And then we're going to do uh, two and three eighths. And then the, which should leave you with a, uh, like about an inch and three eighths left over. At the end. Now we've got the three uh, pieces of uh, that last picket uh, cut down, and it does bring up a good thing to bring up. Uh, you're we're dealing with fence pickets. I mean, this isn't grade A wood that we're dealing with, uh, but you do want to try to find some that don't have big giant knots in them that go all the way through like this one, uh, because you know it will break off at the end. Um, we'll still be able to use this stuff, but. It just does make it easier if you don't have to deal with it. Now we're ready to cut the wide pieces that we uh, just uh, sliced up on the table saw. 
Um, you're going to keep it at the seven degrees that it's been uh, for the uh, side pieces here. Now, the only thing that you're going to change is you're actually going to tilt the blade to seven degrees as well. Um, so you're going to have it offset uh, left and right by seven degrees and offset vertically seven degrees. And you're going to cut the four 14 inch long wide pieces here. Now, when you're done with that, you're going to move to the one and uh, a half inch wide piece and you're going to actually move the fence the opposite direction that seven degrees. So uh, you're going to leave the blade tilted seven degrees, but you're going to change the left and right to the opposite side of whatever you chose. And you're going to make that seven degrees as well and make four 14 inch long pieces out of this. Now it's time to start assembling. We're going to start assembling with the short sides and we're going to grab our, our uh, thin uh, strips here uh, that we just cut and we're going to be adding them here to the sides uh, similar to that. Now things to remember uh, before you do this one is to look remember we beveled the top the bottom of the bottom board and the top of the top board so we need them to you need to orient them so that they are going to angle out uh, because the box itself is going to the whole thing is going to be angling out it's going to be narrower at the bottom than it is the top so you need to make sure that that one is there and then this one as it's coming up you know, so this will be flat as it, as you put it together. So we're going to set those together and then we're going to put these on here and it will, there you go. It'll create one flat plane coming across these. That's our goal. So that when it does sit up, the bottoms are sitting flush against the floor and the tops have a nice flat surface. In putting this together, we're going to put some Type Bond 3 uh, down along the, the seam, and then we're going to flip that over, line it up, and then we're going to brad nail it with some one inch long brad nails uh, to hold it while the glue dries. With this one that I just put together, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we have one flat surface here. It's nice and flat so that when we put the piece across the top, we have a good place to glue. Um, and then the bottom you can see down there, so it angles out outward. Uh, and then this bottom piece will be nice and horizontal to the uh, ground so that we can put a bottom piece in. Now that we've got the side pieces onto the, the short sides, uh, we have the long legs that we're going to put up here too. And, you know, again, you just got to take care to make sure that you have one flat surface here and a flat surface here. Um, and you may need to go back to your saw and trim up a little bit or what have you to just make sure everything's nice and even, but uh, you know, that's just part of the game. Um, so you're gonna put these on here, glue them and nail them on, uh, on both sides, for both sides. And then we'll deal with the long sides. All right, now with the full side put together, you can kind of see how it's gonna sit how it's got that nice little bit of an angle coming out. It's not going to just be a box. So uh, you can see the bottom here. Everything just sits nice and flat against the floor. And uh, now we'll start doing the, front. the fronts. We're going to just lay both of the sides here like that. And then we're going to reach over here. We'll grab each of those. And we're gonna whoop, we're gonna set them in place. We're gonna knock everything over because that's what we do. And uh, so we're gonna glue, rinse and repeat here with these. So they'll go in there and get nailed in. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the last side. Okay, so now that you have the uh, fronts uh, on, it should look like this. Now, just as a word of advice, when I if you have a, a nail gun like this one, it gets pretty big getting it inside here to get in here. So I, I just put a couple in here just to hold it. And then I came back in and really got a good straight on one here because uh, you kind of had to go at an angle a little bit just to get the gun in into the inside of the box. So 
came back out. I'd already gone through here, so it's not like it's any more uh, noticeable than, than the other ones. Um, so now all we got to do is the bottom. Okay, so at this point, you all have already known that I screwed up a little bit, but I've just kind of realized it. Um, so let me explain a little bit about what I did incorrectly. And not that it really matters. Um, it just depends on if you want a square planter or not. My thought was, with this being the short side, it this side or the other side would be the side that you would normally see. This would be a side. Um, and doing that, you know, I didn't like the seam. I like the wide leg here for being the presenting side. Um, and so what we should have done is put together the long sides first uh, because of how they connect inside here. Um, by doing it this way, you can kind of tell it, it is a rectangle. It's not closer to a square. Um, so I would suggest when, and I'll make these notes in the uh, video, to actually do the, the long sides, not the short sides first, and since it's basically a square, um, you know, the short side, the short side uh, will have these and that will just end up being the presenting side. No big deal. Um, the one thing that will change because of that is the bottom. Um, right now, you can see it has a little bit of a gap, which is fine because it'll be drainage. Um, I could fill it with something, but I'm not going to because a pot would just sit in here and it would just be drainage. Um, when you do it in the square fashion, uh, these are all you need for the bottom. It, it's closed in. So it ends up being basically a square. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, it looks fine either way. Whatever your preference is. Now we have the top put together with that last long piece of, uh, of stock that we had. It was about an inch and five eighths. So by doing that, or inch and three eighths, sorry. Uh, it'll just cover this up here. So I like to assemble this stuff on the flat so that it, I can make it tighter and stuff like that. And then once it goes up here, you know, you just line it up, glue it, stick it in place, and it'll be perfect. Now we're left with this amount of scrap so far. Um, we're gonna actually use most of that in the next uh, portion here. The lid here that we already put together, that's going to be last. So we're going to put the trim on the box first. Um, so these are inch and a half. And so we're going to cut the rest of these two inch and a half to make it all work. So uh, run back over to the table saw and uh, cut that down. Now we're back at the table saw with a couple of our scraps. So we have the last piece that we had from the, uh, uh, the wide boards and also the remaining scrap from there. So we're gonna rip it all down to an inch and a half and uh, we're not quite done at the table saw, but we'll come back to that. Now we're back in the shop and we have all of our cut down pieces uh, ready to go. We're going to be putting them here and up here. We're not gonna glue the top ones in yet, glue and nail the top ones in yet, and I'll show you why in a minute. But we're gonna get all the bottom ones, we're gonna get them all cut. So let's get that. So with all these pieces here that we have to put on the, the tops and the bottoms, um, I don't have any specific lengths to cut for those uh, because I'm preferring to cut them in place uh, because you know this distance here to here might be slightly different than the one from here to here. So it's better just to cut them in place. Uh, cut it a little bit long first and then trim it up and get it a nice uh, even fit. The goal is to cover this up here and give it another a little bit of dimension. As you're doing these pieces, uh, just, uh, you know, you're going to cut a, a rough size piece and then you're going to kind of sneak up on it, trying to get it to fit really nicely into this area. Uh, sometimes you're going to cut it just a little bit too short and it's going to leave a little lip, like such as that one. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're not going to be able to tell the difference there. Um, this one has like maybe a sixteenth of an inch lip at the bottom of it. No big deal. As you're fitting in these top ones, uh, this is why we did not glue and screw the, uh, the top piece on yet. So we're going to fit this in here and we're going to line it up with this outside edge to give us a nice clean flat. But you'll notice it does have a lip because 
you know, these we cut at the seven degree angle. So we're going to cut these and test fit them. And then we're going to take them down to the saw and we'll just cut a bevel in them and it'll be nice and clean. Uh, if you don't do that, I mean, it, it's just going to leave a little bit of a, a, a slight gap at the top, um, which, I mean, it's just personal preference if you want to do that or not. But I prefer the clean look. And that right there is essentially all the scrap that I had left. Uh, there's a few little itty bitty minor cutoff stuff that uh, is on the floor down there. But uh, for the most part, that's it. All right, I got bored um, and uh, I decided not to go down to the, uh, use my table saw to trim up these top pieces. Since it was just such a minor lip to them, I just hit it with the sander and flattened them out. So works either way, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, if my table saw would have been right next to me, I probably would have done the table saw, but that's okay. Uh, next and last thing to do is just to attach the top there and we're and done. And there you have it, the ultimate three picket planter. So there's a few other things that you could do to this thing to even dress it up even more. You could paint them, you could stain them or something like that. The other thing you could do, and you could do this as an upcharge. could laser engrave a monogram on it so you need to do this before you put the thing together for most lasers <laughs> um, but uh works out pretty well i think the missus is gonna like it so uh if you've enjoyed this video please like it and subscribe to the channel uh, we try to do all kinds of fun stuff on here and until next time thanks for watching wait if you've made it this far into the video Thank you so much. Let me know that you got this far by putting a comment in the, uh, in, in the comment section and start it with potato. Yes, I like potato, so potato sounds like a good one to start with today. Um, but anyway, so I built this box while my wife was away, and that's the one that is shown in the video. Um, she got home and immediately wanted more. So I made this one today. Uh, overall without trying to film and all that stuff it took me about an hour uh start to finish to get this thing done um without the adding the lasering part in um and i think if you're batching them out or doing multiples of these i think you can easily get it under 45 minutes so uh um she likes them so i guess i did a good job uh other notes i use type on three uh to do these uh, this little bottle here, it was good for about two and a half of these. So the prototype one that I did before this one and this one and about two thirds of this one was out of this bottle. So um, if you're going to make more than two, get a bigger bottle. This stuff is a little bit more liquidy than the Type On 2, and, uh, but it, it's considered waterproof, not water resistant. Um, but I'm thinking it's going to be fine for the little bit that I used in this one. No big deal. But anyway, uh, I'm putting a link in the description here for uh, um, the cut list for everything in here. So go to the site and uh, download it. Make some money with these things. Uh, I would sell these for, without a monogram on them, I think for 40 bucks a piece easy. Uh, in some places you probably can get more. Um, but, uh, around here, I'm going to probably sell them for like 40 bucks and for, you know, if I'm batching them out and I can get it 35, 40 minutes for one, you know, it's not a bad, bad profit on it, I think. And, uh, with the monogram, we'll add 10 bucks. So works for me. All right. Well, again, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks. Uh, make sure you put potato into the, uh, uh comments. I appreciate you. Take care. Bye.